podcast the podcast where it gets real and if you're not ready it will hit you right in the face today's show is being hosted by the four eyes mi nombre es jairo molly hello leslie all right in today's show we will be discussing gloria saldua's nepantla so get ready put your seatbelt on it's about to be a wild ride all right so today's show is uh, well, today's date is March 22nd, uh, 2021. And before we we can get started, a couple hours ago, there was a tragedy uh, both in Boulder, Colorado. And so that's kind of heavy in our minds and in our hearts today. So um, we're sending our best thoughts, um, best vibes, prayers to anyone affected by that tragedy. Um, it's something that we, we would like to never happen to anybody. So our condolences to all in all those families that lost somebody or being you know, are suffering by this so our best thoughts so um yeah so moving moving forward the conversation today we will be discussing gloria and saldua one of the um the uh the figures in chicano literature and um today we will be discussing nepantla so um the concept of in between so before we can even get started and what we got i want to open up the mics here so um if you guys have any first thoughts on this take it away um, what I like about Anzadula's take on Nipantla is that um, it's not just uh, in between two cultures, but anyone can experience being in between, whether it's a situation, a situation yeah. people. Um, it's just uh, any anyone can experience that. Yeah, and I think and we all do. Yeah, at some point in our lives, mm -hmm. something's gonna happen. You know, you might be stuck between two decisions or a struggle, a conflict. Mm -hmm. We're all gonna feel in between something. Right. So it's such a human thing. It's I think it's embedded in our DNA to be somewhere down the line. We're going to be stuck or we've been stuck somewhere. Right. Yeah. I don't know if I like else wants that. To add. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Ready. I like that. It's not just about me and someone else. It could be just about me and be me being in between my thoughts or my perceptions, like an internal monologue of my own of being in between. Wow. Yeah. Cause it's absolutely, mm -hmm. there's nothing worse than having uh, an internal conflict. Right. And just being right. you, it's just so real. Right. It's just you. So, uh, you know, I want to give you guys a hand. Uh, this has been such a <laughs> interesting first few minutes, few seconds. Right. I don't know if Leslie and Alyssa <laughs> want to add anything to this conversation we got going on yeah yeah of course so i think in especially diving into anzaldua's you know napantla and kind of just diving into what she talks about you know she's again giving those personal experiences of that in between as she felt right and then it just translates through our own lives like as we mentioned you know i'm a middle child so i always feel that in betweenness right so it could literally be from just being born um, so you could even fill in between the minute you're born. So I took that away too, as well, um, from talking about this. Wow. That's such yeah. A also to, yeah. Oh yeah. Also to add with all of you guys is just imagine how much of a mental struggle it can be. It could affect mental health. So like for mostly negative, you know, you're deciding who, which version am I? Wow. Yeah. Right. Yep. Wow. So mm -hmm. now that we've stated um this concept of nepantla and it's not just uh something that you struggle with in society but it could be personal it could be emotional it could be mental i'm gonna open up the floor so that molly can take it away because i know she's got something interesting and i'm gonna i'm gonna make sure that uh let me let me set up let it let me set her up right now so that she can take it away so there you, you go Cara. all right so uh so a little technical difficulty here. Oh, this way. Um, this way. I don't know. Okay. A little technical difficulty with the picture here. 
Uh, actually, actually brings a whole new perspective of this picture. So this is uh, artwork that embraces the theme of the Papa. Uh, I actually turned this into a really cool puzzle earlier today online. It's awesome. Uh, but what I like about this puzzle is um, I, I like the primary colors really, um, really uh, embolden the artwork. And so if, if you can tell, like one side of it seems to be like uh, above ground. It's light. There's a flower that's just shining blindingly, um, and it's so beautiful. And the other side seems to be more of the underworld, which Anzandula talks about in her work. There was a lot of um, culture that uh, was relative to um, the underworld uh, with Aztecs and, and whatnot. And uh, I like the things in this because it's it's raining on both sides. She's crying on both sides. So, so there's a lot of emotion and, and it speaks to what uh, Brandy was saying earlier. Sometimes this in-betweenness is an internal conflict. And I think that's what this artwork is really saying. There's even like, it looks like on the underworld part, it's like she's chasing demons maybe or something. I don't know. What did you guys think of this artwork? Yeah, so we're gonna, we're gonna leave this hanging around here, even though it covers our faces, but I think, <laughs> Uh, you know, it's okay. who's gonna who's gonna take it away, and then we'll we'll fix Me? it. All right, so let's go, let's go, Leslie. Take it away. Oh, oh, wrong way. There Anyways, um, <laughs> it's a it's a very nice picture. It's very beautiful, but obviously you could see a lot of emotion dealt with it. Just like how Molly mentioned that it could be like a positive and like a negative side. And she describes color in this, right? The brighter the color, maybe the more positive it is. And then the other colors are more dark, more like melancholy, very like sad. And it just relates and it makes sense um, of being in between and stuck and not knowing where to belong. So yeah, I agree with you, Molly, completely. I like how you um, added details about what your interpretation of what's for the dark side, what you're talking about. I made a reference to Enzo Lua. It was interesting. I liked it. Anyone else wants to take it away? Yeah, if I could I'll chime something. in. Okay. Okay, go ahead, Brandy. Yeah, go ahead, take it away, Brandy. So what I like about this piece is that it kind of not only talks about Nepantla, but it kind of brings about her ideas of the shadow beast also, because oh, wow. I think part of Nepantla is the in between where we're in between who we are but also that there's another side of us that we don't necessarily explore all the time, the hidden part of us, which I think is part of the beastly character in our own persona, so. That's really good, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is a beautiful way to put it. Um, and I really like this amazing, oh, this amazing, um, this amazing photo because too, um, kind of to bounce off what you said, Brandy, especially in the fact that even looking at it, right, I take a look at myself, right? Or even like that day and night, maybe that day and night, that that alternate persona of ours, that hidden figure, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and I definitely think that even on that dark side, right, even the red, maybe just like the 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 emotions or the blood, the the internal, the, the pain, right, of feeling that in between this. And then the other side right with feeling beauty or feeling positivity in your life and feeling that there's a meaning that you are in a great place so i definitely think that this this image is awesome that is awesome and i think that um there is so much to just take from this picture and one thing that it makes me think of is like the yin and the yang right the good and the bad mm -hmm. right. and right. the ultimate struggle of humankind um you know, we always think we're good people, right? I think if, if, if I ask you what, do you, what do you think of yourself? You'd probably say, oh, I'm a great person. And we can say that we have values and, and, and principles that we follow. We have a mantra, right, that we follow. You know, this is we do good to other people. But do we really always do good? Are we always good? There's always that bad in us, right? There's that always that there's that thing that we want to do evil. So there's that struggle between us and I think that picture is perfect and I think it goes uh it goes well with what Ansaldua teaches us is that we can't really judge anybody for their faults their fouls mm -hmm. because we yeah. all have 
you know, mm -hmm. things in us that are evil. And I just want to bring something up. You know, even Jesus in the Bible says, love thy neighbor like you love thyself, right? So mm -hmm. to me, if you really think about that is, how am I going to love my neighbor when I can't accept myself with my mistakes and my errors, right? If I look in a mirror, I look at all, all my imperfections. I look at all my mistakes. So what that means is, that I got to love myself with my imperfections, with my mistakes. So that means that I got to be understanding of my fellow human when they make mistakes. So I can't stand in no ground to judge. But then going back to Ansaldua, this is the internal, right, struggle that we all have. It doesn't matter what religion you are. It doesn't matter what you think. We all have that internal struggle of good and bad that we have to deal with every single day, right? And, and that brings up a really good point about Anzandula presenting this uh, this concept of Napantla. She actually states that, uh, artistically speaking, for, for like especially the border artists, um, if they were to uh, disconnect, um, they would just wither in isolation. So it's it's almost mm -hmm. like she's advocating embracing this Napantla. We all we all get onto it at some point. And so she's just like embracing it and, uh, and just realizing when you're in it. Yeah, for sure. So, um, we have a lot of more things to discuss. So thank you, Molly, for bringing this into the conversation. I think we could have finished the whole show with just this, but I think we have other things we want to do, right? The time, always the time. So let me, let me share a little video with you guys real quick and we'll have a discussion afterwards. Sparkling points of light spluttered and shot past me. Bernie? They were stars, I knew, and flaring comets that peopled my flight among the suns. Hey, Zeus. As I reached the limit of my swing and prepared to rush back on the counter swing, a great gong struck and thunder. Because gong. Go by now, for an unmeasurable Bobby, Jesus, front and center. What'd I do? You spoke Spanish, you know the rules. Mr. Verdugo, you're first. Ronnie? Como un beso tapado. Quiet. All right. So a lot, a lot of things to uncover in this video and um, to think that not too long ago this was happening, right? Not yeah. too long ago. Mm -hmm. We're not talking about 300 years ago. We're not talking about the Middle Ages. You know, we're talking about less, what, 60 years ago, 70 years ago, not too mm -hmm. long ago. And so, yeah, yeah. Leslie, you want to take this? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I decided to, you know, we decided to put this clip on for this podcast because it, I'm sure, has lit a fire in many um, viewers, right? about this video yeah. and it was interesting and I decided to add it. Wait, what were you saying? Oh, I was just, did somebody say something? <laughs> yeah. Yep. Oh. <laughs> oh yeah. But, um, yeah, I decided to get this video because it's what came into my head when we were first discussing about Napalma, right. About in between. And then I was thinking like about the, like, Chicano Latino walkouts that were taking place in East LA around the 1960s and that video is just a prime, like, it, it was based on factual events where, you know, Spanish speaking Latino students would speak their native tongue, as Anzaldúa would, as Anzaldúa would put it. They would speak their native tongue, embrace their culture to the fullest in English speaking schools. And that was an issue to the point where you see they're actually getting physically abused for speaking their native tongue. And it's just something that lights a fire in me it's infuriating to watch and it's just it's a very good movie you guys should watch it um but 
Yeah, I just if you guys want to provide any other observation and analysis that's worth mentioning in this clip. Yeah. Take it away, Alyssa. Yeah. <laughs> I get really mad every time I watch this snip snippet. I just it just so even when he takes the paddle off, right? And it says it's not worth if it's not worth saying it in English, it's not worth saying it at all. And that already mm -hmm. just cuts off everyone, right? It cuts off all those students. So the fact of them pretty much being abused for speaking their, you know, their tongue, they're speaking, it's the language, it's the way they communicate. Um, and I just think because of the time, right? You know, Hyrule talked about the fact that this has not happened, you know, years and years and years ago. I mean, less than like 60, 70 years, right? And then Leslie mm -hmm. talking about how the fact of us being angry, right? So not only does it anger me, but it's like, again, suppressing that inner that inner us, right? Of who, who we are. That is our language. That's what we are speaking. Um, and I just think the fact that the abuse or pretty much the, the torment that came from it, it just... It just it pisses me off. I'm gonna I'm gonna say it. It does. It does. Yeah. So I don't know if anybody wants and to then, add and to then that. English, yeah, English anyway. Isn't that just like they had taken so many words from all different kinds of languages and yeah, you know, manipulated them. So <laughs> why why get rid of all the other languages uh, to to come down to this one? There's there's so many beautiful languages out there. I love hearing them. Yeah, and. I'll, I can relate to this because I, I came as an immigrant to this country when I was eight years old. My family moved here from El Salvador. And I remember my third grade teacher sending me to have special uh, classes to work on my accent. And for years, for yeah. years, for years, yeah. they would send me to classes, even in the middle school level, to try to change my accent. To this day, it never has. Why? As Ansaldua would probably say it poetically my tongue is already twisted that way i can't i can't not pronounce things the way i do right and right. you know when people try to change who you are because of the way you speak they're taking part of your identity so now mm -hmm. we're in between of fitting in or being real to yourself right yeah mm -hmm. we're in that in between and especially minorities you know, people that speak second language, um, you know, we have that struggle of do I fit in with what society wants me to fit in as or am I true to myself? You know, so it's it's harsh. And I, I know I, I probably never got spanked for speaking Spanish in class, but I would have teachers tell me don't speak Spanish, speak English. We're in America. Yeah. And so, yeah. you know, yeah. now that I think back, now that I think back. I was a child when I was being told this by people who were older than me. So that I know I, I can't believe I, I grew up in a, in a world where they wanted to stop who I was, change that part of my identity. You know, I don't know if you, anyone else wants to add on that. Well, I well yeah, I'm kind of learning a lot. Sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> We're already talking about it. It's a very controversial snip. Very controversial. It gets it gets my blood going. It gets the Latin blood going. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. There was something you wanted to add, Brandy? Go ahead, Brandy. Yeah. Yeah. I think that I'm learning a lot about other cultures because I was the student, the white student in the class, where they didn't teach all of the things that your cultures would have taught you had you gone to school in your own country or where you were from. So I'm learning a lot by taking this class or taking multicultural literature or taking Asian American literature viewpoints that you don't see in middle school or high school that you have to wait until you're at a college level to even view. So I think mo a majority of the population doesn't necessarily go to college. So where are they going to learn these things that I'm learning now? So I think it's important. I think it needs to be brought down to a, a younger grade level. Yeah, that is, that's very interesting. And I think yeah. I'm going to feed off what you just said, because um, I personally 
feel that I'm in between the in between of the in between. And the first in between is I'm I'm a minority in this country. I already have a, a lot of things against me, right? Especially if we're a minority, we know what what that feels like. Then second, there's this struggle within our own people to bring each other down, right? There's this competitive of, you know, if El Salvador is better, if Mexico is better, or if Nicaragua is better, or, you know, and I think mm -hmm. it's such a toxic thing that if we would work together, we would not be in between of the in-between. And I don't know if this happened to any of you that are, uh, you know, Latinx, but it's happened to me. When I try to tell people that I'm not Mexican, because they assume that we are all Mexican because we speak Spanish. Or, you know, I've heard people say, oh, you're speaking Mexican. Well, you yeah. know, no, I'm, I'm not speaking Mexican. I'm, I'm speaking Spanish. And right. when you try to tell them that you're that I'm Salvadorian and I'm half Nicaraguan and on the side of my mom, you know, they're still Korean. So it's, 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 I'm a weird mix. But it, when I try to explain to them that I'm not Mexican, they're like, oh, it's all the same thing. It's all the same thing. Mm -hmm. You're all Hispanic. You're all Latinx. And I just think that that's so toxic that it limits people's, um, you know, place to grow. And I'll, and I'll even say this. Like, why is it that um, Latinx um, noticieros como Univision, they only mm -hmm. highlight, like, Mexican news, right? There's mm -hmm. nothing wrong with Mexico, but in the U.S., the US this is the melting pot. We have so many other great cultures and countries that unless something super tragic happens in their country, they get something in the news. You know what I'm saying? So I just think that mm -hmm. there's this thing, like there's a whole bunch of people that are just in between the in-between of the in-between, you know. And, you know, even a couple of weeks ago in, in, in our class, we discovered that there was, I discovered that there was a group of Central American poets in the 1980s that were writing amazing poetry, but because they weren't Chicano or they weren't white, they weren't getting money or they weren't getting published. To this day, I'm still trying to look for books because it's hard to find. Even Amazon only has a few books. And these, uh, these poems have been lost to time because of that reason, because there's people who are stuck in the in-between of the in-between of the in-between. So I think that classes like this one and people like us who are forward thinking, we're bringing all this subcultures that have been, you know, in the mud for years. We're bringing it back up. Right. And I think this is something amazing that we're doing, learning from each other. And I think this is this is what gets us out of the in-between. Right. Learning from each other, respecting. We don't have to agree with what everyone says. That's the craziest thing. We, we're not going to agree with everything, but we can meet in the middle, show respect, show appreciation for other cultures, for way of thinking. And I think this is how we get out of the in-between. We can build bridges. We can build bridges. That's what we're doing. Mm -hmm. There you go. You know what? You, you know what? I like that. We can build bridges. I like that. I like that. I don't know if anyone else wants to add onto that. I think it's also kind of like we need to decolonize ourselves. I think we've gotten to this place where we let other people dictate how we think, and it's time to get it back. Wow. That is such a crazy concept. We have to Critical undo thinking. that. You know that what? That was beautiful. Because yeah, that was just so deep. You know what? We're going to go crazy. That was that was deep. That gets you thinking. Decolonize yourself. Decolonize yourself. Yeah. Wow. Beautiful. That is crazy. Because how many stuff do we have, right? Even, even, I don't know if you ever had someone tell you this for those that speak Spanish. Um, oh, that's not proper Spanish. Because that's not how they say it in Spain. Mm -hmm. That's that colonizing mentality, right? Well, I don't live in Spain. Mm -hmm. I live in El Salvador mm -hmm. or Mexico or Guatemala. And we say things different, mm -hmm. right? Like in El Salvador, mm -hmm. you know, if you're referring to a kid, you say cipote or el bicho, right? Or if you mm -hmm. go to Nicaragua, you say, um, el, you know, el, el chavalo or el chihuin. But if you go to Puerto Rico, those words might have something different, right? But we make our mm -hmm. own vocab, right? We don't have to speak like they speak in spain because we don't we don't live there you know and i think that's something that's big with ansaldua to be true to yourself to your vocabulary to what makes you right and even if you don't speak spanish i'm sure that there's there's words in, that in your household growing up that are you know for you there are you know you said it at your household right 
and 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 you understood what your family was saying to other people you're like oh th that family's crazy but you knew what your family was talking about because you know that was your vocab that that was you that was part of your identity you know yeah and that's right there that is that that whole right talking about the languages and whatnot is that in between right it is that in between for many of us right not not in that perspective not not in those shoes of you know understanding your language and things like that so that alone right there is the in between us yeah definitely 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 so i i think i don't know if, if there's anything else you guys want to talk about i mean we still got a couple minutes left if there's anything else you guys want to bring up that's important to you guys when we think about the in between this podcast was created for the in between this podcast is for those people who have felt in between so speak your mind let's do it <laughs> no filter no filter let's do it <laughs> well i just think it's important to mention that i know on previous conversations like that we met up in zoom before that it's not only just latino spanish hispanic that feel in between because it's not just us but it's like a lot of different you know groups but um yeah that's important to focus because just a lot of people think they're like oh they're latino they're minorities like pobrecitos type stuff and it's like well we're not the only ones though like i'm pretty sure there's another group that also goes through the same like you know and it doesn't have to be um where we come from you know it can be yeah. who we are as a person mm -hmm. right. Right? right your your values yeah. who you are might not fit with a certain group of people but you might fit with other people and that is perfectly okay yeah. right yeah. and it, i think it can, it can even be like where we are in life right now exactly yes yeah. it's, it's just yeah. a situation <laughs> yeah. Yeah. see and that's why it's so important to to respect everyone's struggle because your in between might not be my in between but there is an in between and we might we right. must respect the hustle and we must respect you know people trying to get out of their in between and you know and i think as as a as a community whether you're white black trans gay lesbian it doesn't matter we all come together and we work on getting each other out of the in between so that you know or we can be ourselves you know and i think that we are going in a positive way right now in the world where i think we are all acknowledging each other and we're deciding to work together and so i see progress mm -hmm. and i hope that we keep it going you know, because the best way to get out of the in-between is to help each other out. Yeah, exactly. So I, I come back to Auntie like... Gula's point. Oh, well, I was going to come back to Auntie Gula's point. <laughs> go ahead, go point. ahead. Bring it back to Auntie yeah, Gula. Yeah. Go ahead. Artistically speaking, um, you know, she's, she's not really advocating completely getting out of Nepal. Yeah. You know, it's, it's what really drives the creativity and what really drives us to keep finding ourselves, keep figuring out where we fit, where we are this puzzle piece. And we keep trying to figure out where we where we are. And so we, we might fit here one day, we might not fit there the next day, for whatever reason, we might come back to it and try to try to place the piece again. Um, but that's, I think that's what her uh, work speaks to about her, um, her artistic journey and, and her life journey, really, is just trying to trying to always figure out where am I in between? Where do I fit? What am I in between now? Where, yeah. where can I fit just to keep moving forward? Alyssa? Well, yeah. Um, so Con, I was just going to kind of jump forward, right, with what we've been talking about with the fact of, you know, the tongue, right? Uh, so I really wanted to bring this up, especially with the fact that, you know, we're talking about speaking a sec second language um, or what it is or what it means to speak proper English, right? So I want to talk a little bit and you guys maybe can chime in because more, maybe less, this is like a personal feel, right? And I'm sure there's people out there that are watching this and even class that's watching this um, that will relate to it. So what about the people? Because I was born in a family where English is my first language. So more or less the Spanish part, right? That Puerto Rican side, that Mexican side really was neglected for many years. So that's affected my own Spanish to where, as Hiro mentioned, is very broken, right? Mm -hmm. So I can understand, hear bits and pieces, but I'm in that in-between of feeling, I'm not Mexican enough, I'm not American enough, I'm not Puerto Rican enough. 
So I feel that in between us constantly, right? Because I have family members that don't speak any English. A lot of my friends speak, you know, two, three languages. So what do you guys think in that sense? Or maybe like, again, in a personal sense about the people who necessarily, or it, it could be anything, right? You could be Brazilian, you could be talking Portuguese. Um, in the sense of those people who are in between their languages. What do you guys think? And I, that's what I really wanted to bring up. And what I wanted to say is more or less in between two tongues. Interesting. In between two tongues. Okay. 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 That's a thinker. That's a thinker. Yeah. I, I don't know. I guess. Go ahead, Brandy. But I see kind of feeds off of the idea of the standpoint theory because what we know is what we are taught. Mm. So if you're not taught Spanish and then you're taught later, it's kind of feeding off of your background or what you're influenced by or who the people in your life, who becomes your friends or who are your family. Like, I think there's a lot of choices to be made. So that's the in-between. What choices do I make to make it the way I want it to be? I, I was just going to say something along those same lines. Like, I was going to talk about the opportunity. So depending on, you know, where you are and who, who you're around and who you're growing up with, where's your opportunity to delve into that? Do you um, go out and seek it? Or, you know, what, what do you, you want to do? Wow, um, I'm still thinking because you know you're <laughs> you're stuck in two worlds because it's true. Yeah, you know it's true. it's two realities, yeah. and I, I can totally relate because I'm I'm half Nicaraguan, I'm half Salvadorian, and even there that was a struggle. Then coming to this country, it was like a, a third struggle. Where do oh, I fit? Okay. Right? Where yeah. do I fit? Am I like yeah? Am, am I Salvadorian enough? Am I Nicaraguense enough? Am, am I I don't know, uh, whitewash enough, I could say, or, or whatever, right? Like, it's my English good enough or, or, or whatnot. But um, I think this is where, you know, and I'll bring it back to Ansaldu a little bit. Um, this is where you make your own stand, right? This is where mm -hmm. you make your own stand. Like, this is where you embrace who you are, who you truly are. I'm, you know, surrounded by this amazing cultures, but where do I fit in this puzzle of the world and humankind? I'm this person that is, you know, might be weird to some people because some words sound funny or my accent is, is weird, you know, but this is where I fit in. And I think that we must embrace that uniqueness within yeah. us, right? Even if you're stuck in two tongues. That, that was a great we, thing. We can also uh, morph into, so not not just where you fit in, but where you can fit in because like Hanzul says, I'm becoming. I'm being, but I'm becoming. Mm. So it's, it's mm -hmm. a constant change too. It's a constant change. There you go. Yeah, so, yeah I think when after reading, like reading through it, right, she kind of breaks up like the subcategories for this, this, the Spanish, right? She says like, the Tex-Mex Spanish or the standard English or the standard Spanish, right? So she brings it back to, um, you know, building this language, I think more or less so that we stay rooted or so that we stay connected with ourselves. So I think that's mm -hmm. to what I kind of, took it away as kind of answering my question and getting your guys' feedback. It's, it's all, again, it's all, it's all a melting pot of that standpoint. So sadly we got two minutes left in this podcast uh, because of time, but if there's anything else, anyone else wants to uh, say something else before we leave, I would really appreciate it. And I think we would all appreciate to hear, cause I, I think we've had such an amazing conversation tonight. Oh yeah. Speaking, speaking about Nepal and the whole concept of in-betweenness, there's actually this um, program um, at Nevada State College. It's a summer bridge program where you get a jump start in college, right? And it's called Nepal because it's in between transitioning from high school to college. And it's primarily based for first college generation students, right? Where your family or your parents didn't attend college, so you have no idea how to fill out FAFSA what I expect for classes, like finances. So I just thought that program was worth mentioning. And I'm actually a member in that group. It's a mentorship that you're, they, they mentor you since the day you walk into the school all the way to your graduation. And I'm excited wow, to be graduating awesome. in May of this year. So I couldn't have been here without them. Yes, she's graduating. Yes, yes. Woo! 
we're gonna throw a party <laughs> yes <laughs> Even though you're in one, we'll do some Skype or some Zoom and we'll party with you. I'm going in May. I'm oh. going in May. Okay. Right. Well, if we all have yeah. vaccines and, and we're ready to go, let's do it. Yeah. Let's do it. We'll party it up. So, um, Brandy, anything else you wanted to add before we, we, we get off? Maybe we should just uh, embrace our in betweenness. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. We're trying yes. to find out who we are. Yep. We are. I'm going to tell my family i am puerto rican enough i am mexican yes. enough I'm telling my employers right. i am american enough <laughs> there we go <laughs> molly anything else you want to add before we go uh no i think that pretty much said it right there we we are enough as we are yes i like that we, we are enough we will become more but we are enough yes. at this point in time awesome so with that being said this is the end of the podcast so hopefully you can join us next time where we have more discussion so until next time bye-bye bye bye, -bye. bye, -bye.